The summer after my sophomore year, I made a decision that would change my life. It was the same decision that many teens will either soon make or will have already made. Where to work over the summer. For most of us, the jobs we take over the summer are basically any job we can find, and they're usually not very interesting. The goal is typically to make a bit of money, to maybe save up for college, pay for a car, or just to have some spending money to hang out with friends. And these motivations are completely valid. I wanted the same things too. I saw a job opening at a smoothie shop that paid slightly over minimum wage. Plus, you got a free smoothie at the end of each shift. I love smoothies with a passion, so this sounded like a pretty good deal to me. But I had another option. An organization called the Kansas City STEM Alliance offered me the opportunity to volunteer at some of their summer app developing camps. For those of you who don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And while the money and free smoothies really tempted me, I ended up taking the volunteer position with the STEM Alliance. So why would I, a broke high schooler, with a passion for smoothies, turn down a paid position in favor of an unpaid one? Well, it was because the job with the STEM Alliance spoke to an even greater passion of mine, a passion for supporting girls in technology. You see, back in the fifth grade, I had attended one of those summer app developing camps and had learned how to make my own applications for smartphones. It was especially cool because since it was only girls, I felt safe and supported in coding. In fact, I had such a positive experience that I have continued to study computer programming after the camp. Despite being the only girl in many of my later computer science classrooms, it was that initial experience where I felt safe and excited about coding that has allowed me to persevere. So I worked at the STEM Alliance, and I had a terrific time that summer helping for other young girls to have the same experiences that I did. It was definitely a valuable experience, much more than money could have given me. So when I think about my life after these summer camps, I'm reminded of a video game. There is this weird game I used to play called Katamari Damacy. In the game, you play as a space alien who is given the task of creating new planets and stars. To do this, you have a sphere called a Katamari, which you roll along the Earth, picking up objects to make it larger. It's kind of like how you roll up a snowball on the ground to make it grow bigger. You start out by picking up small things like paper clips, but eventually you can pick up larger things like cats, people, trees, and even buildings. And if you're really good, your Katamari gets turned into a new planet or a new star. My life after that summer has been like playing Katamari. I've been able to keep rolling and picking things up. Today, I would like to talk to you about how I've begun to roll up the world one thing at a time, and how you can start to as well. Because while the summer app camps were the first thing I picked up, they certainly weren't the last. Most of the time, one thing led right into the next. Because I had worked at the summer app developing camps over the summer, the Kansas City STEM Alliance offered me the opportunity to meet Malala, the Nobel Peace Prize winner from Pakistan. Malala was speaking at the Kaufman Center, and I was invited to join a smaller Q&A event with other young girls. Malala won her Nobel Peace Prize because she stood up for girls' rights to be educated. After speaking with her, I knew that I could do more for girls in my own community. And because I had met Malala, the sponsors of her visit asked me to speak to them about what the experience was like. So I attended the sponsors' event, and I not only talked about how amazing it was to meet Malala, but also about my own passion for girls and technology. Because I had spoken about my passion, I got to talk to many of the sponsors about it, including Joy Wheeler, who is the CEO of Girl Scouts in this region, and Julie Wilson, who is the Chief People Officer over at Cerner Corporation. These women really inspired me to stay true to my word and to support girls in my community. I had recently read about a club here in Kansas City called Girls Who Code. And I thought that maybe if I joined it, I could learn more about how to create a year-round girls coding program. However, when I attempted to join the club, they told me that it was full. 
That's when a light bulb went off. If I could have joined the existing clubs, maybe I could start some new ones. So I talked to people at both the Kansas City STEM Alliance and at my high school about starting new Girls Who Code clubs, and they both agreed. This was probably the largest thing I had rolled up thus far, because it allowed me to make an impact on girls year round and help them to have a positive view of technology. At the same time, I joined the Women's Foundation Girls Leadership Program. This program gave me the opportunity to volunteer at TEDx Women KC, a live stream event here in Kansas City. I worked at the t-shirt table and asked one of the coordinators how I could get involved in future TED events. She told me about today's event, TEDx Youth KC. So my Katamari is growing, and so is my calendar. Because at this point, after school, I'm either going to a TEDx Youth meeting, a Girls Who Code meeting, a Girls Leadership meeting, a school-related activity meeting, and on top of it all, I had homework. I'm keeping busy, but I'm happy. The Women's Foundation also offered me my next big opportunity, speaking to 1,500 people at their annual luncheon. Because of everything I had done in STEM thus far, and because of all the leadership experience I had shown here in Kansas City, they asked me if I'd be willing to speak about what I had learned from their program at their luncheon. One cool thing is that the girl who spoke alongside of me, Sophia, was Miss Teen Missouri at the time, and she just became Miss Teen USA. A second cool thing is that I got to speak alongside of Madeline Albright, who was the first female Secretary of State, and Ann Compton, who is an ABC, ABC News White House correspondent. I got to speak with both of these women, and they both encouraged my passion in STEM. So now we're into 2017, and because of some of the people I had met earlier, I'm able to keep rolling things up. Remember those initial app camps that I had worked at? Well, one of the girls I had worked with, Erin Smith, is one of the amazing speakers today. She, and I, she asked me about joining, helping her to start a new program here in Kansas City called KC stem -inists. With the help of sponsors from NCWIT, we were able to start a program to help high school and middle school girls learn not only about technology, but about entrepreneurship and global issues. Also, remember how I met Julie Wilson from Cerner earlier? Well, with her help, I was able to leave school two hours early every day to go work an internship over at Cerner. I worked in cybersecurity and I had multiple amazing experiences. At this point, because of everything I had done, I had begun to earn some recognition. My Girls Who Code clubs got featured in both Simply KC Magazine and in the Kansas City Star. I was an NCWIT national runner-up and state winner of their Aspirations in Computing Award. And it was at this award ceremony that I met Taylor Milligan, who has become one of my favorite mentors. I got to meet John Cook, the CEO of VML, and that invitation was given to me by another one of today's speakers, Robert Manigold. I continued to work the internship over at Cerner, and I probably made up financially for that unpaid summer the year before. And most recently, my Katamari has started rolling on a global scale. I was one of the applicants who applied to attend YSI STEAM camp in Blantyre, Malawi. There were 1,100 girls who applied, and they chose 80 from seven different countries in Africa and 20 from the United States. Because of everything I had done in Kansas City so far, I was one of the lucky 20 chosen to go spend two weeks in Africa learning from such amazing organizations as NASA, Google, Intel, the American Society of Microbiology, the UN's Girl Up campaign, among many others. I had enough amazing experiences there that I could probably fill up a totally separate TED Talk with them. I got, time, I got here just in time to start school this fall. And I haven't even gotten to mention everything I've been doing, but suffice to say, I've been keeping busy and following my passions. But that's how I've been rolling up the world. How can you? I hope you can take many lessons away from my story, but there are five main things that I hope you can take away from today. The first is to be passionate about something. The sphere in my Katamari game, the thing that got this all rolling, was my passion for girls in tech. Without that passion, I probably wouldn't have gotten anywhere. I know that if you had asked me two years ago to say where my passions were, I wouldn't have had a clue. 
I told you that I had a passion for smoothies, but that wasn't really where my passion lied. Figure out what you like, whether it's coding, photography, soccer, smoothies even, and then figure out what you like about these things. Do you like the thrill of victory, capturing important moments, teaching people important skills, Sipping a cold, fruity beverage as you hang out with your friends. Figure out what you like or don't like about what you're currently doing, and then use your talents to help provide people with a better experience. Suddenly, you have a passion. The next thing that I hope you can take away from today is to help others. It's hard to sometimes realize this, especially as a young person, but you know something that nobody else does. You have something, no matter what your age is, that you can help to teach others. Be a leader, create opportunities for others. Find as many ways as you can to support people. The next point that I would like you to take away is to look beyond the usual jobs and school-related activities. You may see that I didn't mention my high school a lot, and that wasn't because I wasn't doing cool things with them. I was going to robotics and forensics competitions and taking multiple college courses. However, most of the cool stuff that I did was outside of school. Look into your community for opportunities. This doesn't mean to not take opportunities where they are given to you, including in school and job, in jobs, but try to find out opportunities that are outside of your comfort zone. And that leads me directly into my next point. Don't wait for opportunities to find you. And if they don't do find you, don't say no because they're unfamiliar. Like I said, look outside of your usual places. I mentioned that I'm a part of the Women's Foundation Girls Leadership Program, the, the TEDx Youth KC team, and I'm also a member of Cerner's Junior Firsthand Ambassadors Board, activities that are clearly not related to STEM. However, I bring my STEM knowledge to help these organizations. Take every opportunity you are given, including volunteer opportunities. And don't be afraid to incorporate your passions into everything you do. And the last thing that I hope you can take away from what I've said today is to find a mentor to help you. Because like in the game, you might be picking up things that may seem too big for you to handle on your own. Make it a point to keep talking to these mentors as you go. Nothing that I have shown you today was just because I did something. Sure, I may have said something or helped to lead something, but it was the mentors in my life who have made all of this possible for me. Whether it's someone who's willing to read your emails, like my dad sometimes does for me, someone who's willing to help you find the next opportunity, like Martha McCabe did when she helped me to get the opportunity to meet Malala, or just people who will listen to your problems, like my favorite teachers, Mrs. Reynolds, Mr. Creech, Mrs. Gladback, Mrs. Schultz do for me, and like how my favorite mentor, Taylor Milligan, does. And yes, I do need that many people to keep me sane sometimes. Find people who can help you. You can't handle it all on your own. I sometimes wonder about an alternate timeline where I take the job making smoothies. Maybe it would have led to different but equally cool things. Or maybe not. But I'm happy to be in the timeline that I'm currently in. I have, continued, I have a passion for girls in STEM that I have continued to push forward and have let it take me wherever I go. I'm happy to see where I roll my katamari next, and I hope you too can begin to roll up the world one thing at a time. Thank you.